Well, why don't we just go ahead and jump on and one of the, we might have some friends trickle on in here for the conversation, but we can at least start it off. Um, so for those who are here, welcome. We are so glad to have you. Um, this is Local First's very first webinar. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and being a partner in um, sharing out some new information and just gathering as we figure out how to navigate the season. Um, we have some really wonderful Local First members who are here to share marketing information with us. Um, ready to answer your questions and to help folks move forward when they think about marketing and marketing strategies. So um, why don't we first just introduce everyone and if you just want to wave, I know your names are there, but it's nice to um, point everybody out as we're here. So our first panelist is Susan Anderson. Um, she's the owner of the Anderson Group, a full marketing agency in Jenison. Um, thanks for being here. And Asia Baker. Um, she's the owner and founder of Bismarck Strategies, which is a marketing firm that specializes in social media uh, based out of Grand Rapids. Thanks, Asia. Uh, Christine Klecki is here. She's the president of PMSI Marketing and Social Media, another full service agency in Grand Rapids. Um, and last but not least, Fallon Peters uh, here as well, the VP of LaFleur Marketing uh, based here in Grand Rapids as well. We are so glad to have you. Thank you all for being here. Um, and in addition to the panelists who are joining us, uh, Catherine is here as well. She's our Local First Program Manager, for those who might not know. And I'm Kathleen, uh, the Membership Coordinator here as well. <coughs> so we are really excited to have you. Catherine's going to be checking out your questions as we have them pouring in. Um, so we're going to go over a couple of things here, but if something is relevant in the moment, feel free to ask. We will also have some time set aside here at the end for you to dig in further into things that me may not have already addressed. So feel free to hold your questions till that time, but if it is relevant for something we're already speaking about, we'd love to address it. Um, so thanks everyone. We are um, super excited to be hosting this for the first time. And uh, we know that there's not really any need to reiterate how difficult the season is for so many and all the pieces that we're navigating. Um, but know that there are certainly a few obstacles in the current present crisis that we're in and that there will continue to be some as we navigate what it's like to revitalize our community. Um, in spite of that, we are so thankful for our business members who are just here and willing and able to share some information with us and help to continue to support the businesses who are in our community, especially in trying times. Um, so thank you for being here. Thanks for the folks who are here in attendance as well. Um, we're so glad to see your name. As we mentioned before, it's so hard not to be able to see your faces. We miss you, but um, we are really glad to have you. Um, just before we jump in, I, I want to let everyone know, too, a little bit of the logistics, what we're going to cover today. Um, we have some conversation that we'll navigate here as far as marketing approaches um, in the beginning of the hour, and then we'll set aside some Q&A time at the end. So if we don't cover anything, feel free to add your questions there um, and take advantage of that Q&A feature. But uh, why not just jump right in? So I think before, as we're uh, getting started, we'd love to hear from all of our panelists. Um, what does your current situation look like? How has your business pivoted um, since being in shelter in place? Where did you want to start? <laughs> um, Susan, go ahead. Um, <laughs> okay. um, so I've been in business for 25 years and I've never seen anything like this. So we, have, we are a very relational uh, agency. We're not large in size, but we're mighty and we're, our relationships with our clients are really important. So this time for us was not a time to sell. This was a time to connect, meet people where they are, figure out what's happening and help them change and pivot their businesses. We found it very crucial as an agency, but also for our clients to really be supportive, to stay up on everything that's happening with their businesses. I have a wide variety of clients and a large, they're large to small with a lot of different issues at this given time and a lot of a lot of pains, but a lot. Some, some have some good things going on. So figuring out what that is and meeting them there and also doing that for my team. It's very important for, for people to build their culture from the inside out and to grow and to be sustainable. So if I can't keep my team positive and up and well taken care of, then we can't take care of our clients. So we've pivoted um, along with trying to help our clients pivot. Wonderful. Um, Asia, what is business like for you guys these days? Um, I would definitely probably echo a lot of what Susan has said, except for the team part, because it's just me right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what we've really tried to zone in and really focus on is really 
a lot of times before, like we really were kind of focusing on like marketing the clients and doing different things, like making sure their strategy is in place, but we really had to narrow in and like make sure our strategy was just in place, mm -hmm. right aligned with the clients um, to even get ourselves out there to know that we're actually here to help during this time, because we know that this is a trying time um, for a lot of clients right now. Um, and one of the projects that we actually started um, putting together is a marketing calendar um, and a marketing planner that can actually be helpful, you know, for business owners to know, like, what should their process be to actually market themselves. So that's one of the biggest thing that we've done to really kind of pivot and really help out. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. What does that look like for you, Christine? So, yeah, we've been in business for 20 years. So, and I echo a lot of what Susan said as well, you know, when you've been doing this for so long, you, you build a lot of relationships. And so it's, it's all about the clients. And so we've been very virtual to begin with. And so that helped us during this time because the way our team communicates, we have a lot of projects, we have a project management program. But what we needed to do was communicate even more with our clients because they, their needs are changing constantly. We are in um, some specific niches. We go outside of those, but we're in healthcare and senior services. We're in construction. We're in restaurants and um, bars and then legal services and then um and then law is kind of a an outlier and we're kind of in all of those but we work a lot digitally so a lot of our clients are getting hit daily with um different challenges and messaging needs and we help with their website so we're constantly in communication with them about um you know, they're, what we need to put on social media, what we need to put on, on their websites, how are they feeling, how are they doing, you know, especially the restaurant and bar industry that's been hit really hard and so helping them with takeout and how to communicate that. We have redone websites for churches um, so that they can get their services up because we work, you know, with service industries and, and with nonprofits a lot too. So just kind of getting that stuff going and just their website ready and, and really working even close more closely with them and like we were talking before this started we're also doing a lot of free services because this is not the time to bail on your clients if they can't pay right now that's fine let's just do this let's get through this together so we're trying to offer that out there to people too it's like you know what this is why we're here you know let's do let's do this let's do the right thing let's all get through this together and and you know get into that new normal yeah, absolutely. Fallon, what about you at LaFleur? Um, a lot of the same for us. A uh, big shift to webinars. That was something that we were doing in the past. It was part of our marketing strategy, but really shifting um, in, in ourselves being on webinars and, and bringing and sharing the knowledge that we can with a broader audience um, and then encouraging our clients to replicate that same sort of strategy. So um, we have found... Um, a lot of traction in partnering with larger organizations to be a member of a group webinar or a panelist, just like I'm on right now, um, and kind of riding those coattails of, of organizations or um, programs that have a broader audience. Um, so that's been a big strategy and shift for us. And then just putting ourselves in the shoes of each and every one of our clients and thinking, if I owned this business, what would I be worried about and how can I communicate to on behalf of my client to their clients? So for example, um, how can I help each of my clients communicate to their clients how to get small business loans or PPP funding, you know, like so that they can keep working with my client and my client can keep working with me. So, um, you know, it's a self, self-serving, but also helping, you know, how can we all come together and help each other in this time as partners and not looking for business necessarily. I think tangentially that usually volunteering your services, doing free things like Christine is saying, like that comes back to you in the end. Um, but, but ultimately we just want to partner and help each other get through this time together and let's all brainstorm ideas and let's help everybody learn how to work remotely. Um, that's something that we've done from the beginning. So we, we worked remotely, we got an office. So moving to remote for us, like 
um, Christine was saying, was a very smooth transition. But that's not the same for a law firm office who has systems set up where they don't know how to do that. So how do how do we? We came together with an agency, a partner that works in virtual workspace and getting everything to the cloud, and brought that knowledge to our market so that they could do that, so that they could keep running their business. Yeah, absolutely. That's so important. I, I think it's great to hear how each of you have shifted because this season everyone is impacted to different degrees, maybe within different industries, but um, it is great partially to hear that no one is alone in this. And also we have a network of people who are ready and willing and able um, to provide support. So thank you for doing that here in this webinar and in the ways that you're doing that through your business as you've been in. Um, I think as we're, as we're jumping in here, um, a lot of folks, before they can jump into their branding and their messaging, it's really important to understand their purpose. Uh, so one question that we um, hear often is, how can a business really approach their why? Um, and specifically, how can someone approach their why behind their branding um, in this season? Uh, Christine, Asia, is that something you guys could speak to? Definitely. Yeah. And kind of go back and forth or do however that works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for us, I mean, it always comes down to that anyway. So when we work with clients, we always break that down. So no matter what we do, um, we always come back to the why because that's, you know, your core and who you are. And right now, you know, some people are slower. Some people are just geared up and going crazy trying to keep up with things. It just, you know, there's that gamut in life. But um, the why, and I, can, I was going to share my screen if I can. Uh, see if this works for everybody can you guys all see the circle mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so you know having why at the core at the core of what you do you know because we have the what we have the how and then we have the why and so um you know People know how you do things. People know what you do, but it's why you do it. And right now, that's just a really important um, time because as you get out there, we're getting more on digital media. This is how we're all communicating. Um, it's really important to narrow that piece down. And there's some exercises, you know, that you can do um, to, to understand what your why is, you know, and it's just look at, um, you know, what are some words that, um, you know, what defines who you are? Just go through an exercise and say, okay, who are we? And, you know, are we, um, trustworthy? Are we nimble? Are we, you know, just the words that describe who you are? And if you just go through that and spend some time saying who you are and who you want to be, you can kind of get back to that why relatively quickly with that. And there's some exercises you can do that way. Um, and this is a good time to just go back and kind of step back and look at that. And then how is that communicated? What are some visuals that that represent that why for you because you know as Asia will share too um, you know getting on getting online you know and we're all on there right now but you can't have this you know just six sentence mission statement on there no one's going to read it so thinking about those visuals too and I don't want to take up all the time <laughs> so <laughs> no um I was just going to say um really knowing and understanding what your why is because it's it's what keeps you going um a lot of times as business owners as you guys um can probably agree with but every day you feel like not really quitting your business but quitting your business because it it can get very stressful and sometimes you have to reference your why as a friendly reminder like okay this is why i'm actually doing it mm -hmm. you know each business has its story you know, and clients really, they buy into a story if they can be sold or if they have that emotional connection to it. So it's really important to let the people know what your why is. Sometimes I tell my client, like if they've created their business plan, usually like your first business plan that you create, like it's like perfect, you know, it kind of has like all of your emotions and your reasons as to why you want to go into business and how you see your business in five years down the line. I sometimes tell them, you know, every quarterly, maybe look back at that business plan to see what your purpose was 
and your reason as to why you actually started mm -hmm. your business. That's a good reminder, like, okay, this is why I'm actually doing this. If I'm feeling down a little bit, or if this pandemic, COVID-19 is kind of affecting me in a different way, you know, this is a good reminder, like, okay, this is why I need to do this, mm -hmm. or this is why I need to focus more on, you know, this to try to work together as a community to really try to stand strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And making sure it's just to add in that that is communicated in everything that you do. It's on your website mm -hmm. because that's, that's the most important thing because your why is what connects your audience to you. And mm -hmm. if you have that clear and you understand why you're doing it and they can buy in with you, then they jump in and they're part of what you are doing and they believe in your organization too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's, it's interesting to some of the points that you've mentioned that I think in this season, it's really easy to react. And so uh, part of what I also heard and what you addressed too, is having something that's foundational coming back to what, what actually am I here to do? What am I supporting? As opposed to a season when it's very stressful, it's very easy to react to what's going on and not come back to that foundation. So that's so important. So once folks have their why in place, um, how can businesses best spend their marketing dollars in the season? Um, Fallon, Sue, is that something you guys can speak toward? Yeah, do you want me to go first, Fallon? Sure. Okay. So one of the things that I think is, is it goes back to that why, that core value, right? What you, what you do is important and why you're doing it. And if you have a, if you currently as businesses, anyone listening, have a budget that you have set aside for your marketing, now is the time to reassess and reallocate because what the plan was has to change now. Um, it doesn't stop. It just needs to change. You reassess, you listen, you learn, you're continually updating your messaging right now while staying true to your core values. You still are who you are and that has not changed in this COVID-19. How you communicate does need to change. Where you're communicating, what the images you're using, what you're saying, Stay at home behavior is influencing the way we are consuming social media, TV, radio. So if you have nothing in those spots and you have everything in magazines and you have a website that you're not communicating on social media or driving traffic, there's just a lot of things that you really need to look at in your current marketing plan Be, and being relevant, being positive, but not ignorant, educating and supporting. I think it's really important that your messaging is true to who you are, but you have to look at what's changing, why it's changing, where people are. I mean, we're consuming social media so much more. And where if your brand isn't there, it needs to be there. No matter your industry, it just matters the channel and what you're putting out. And if it's Twitter, if it's LinkedIn, if it's Facebook, if it's Instagram, where and why is really important. So choose your, your, your media mix. Um, you can call any one of us. I'm sure any one of us can help you answer those things at no charge. We're not here to sell something today. We're here to support. And I think we're all on the same page with that. Each of these businesses is. And developing these creative campaigns that have goals. And they're more than likely social media campaigns at this point. Mm -hmm. um, TV, radio, uh, if you do have a lot of trade shows or events that you host as companies, like restaurants, you're hosting different events or having people come in, do virtual events. Have some kind of interaction with clients and communicate that way. I have a client, and I'm trying not to run long, I have a client and she has horse stables and she has a nonprofit attached to that. So she creatively is doing Easter egg hunts for a week. She's how to, how to groom horses and She's putting funny videos out there and different things of herself and it's just refreshing and she's also very engaging with it. So just kind of looking at how you can shift some of the things you traditionally do into this new, hopefully not completely normal rest of our life, right? Just temporary normal and just being relevant in there for your clients and the people that use your brand. Yeah, I would echo that. Um, some of our clients right now are, if they're, it, it kind of depends on where your business stands today. Like, do you have, do you have the ability to keep your business going? Can you do e-commerce? Can you sell? Can you do curbside? Can you do delivery? 
then then focusing on that and getting up to speed, whatever you need to, whether that's revamping your website, adding e-commerce functionality, um, you know, quickly figuring out the logistics of online orders for curbside pickup and what does that mean? Um, so if there's an opportunity to sell, there's kind of one trajectory there where you should be spending and, and yes, consumption of content is up across the board. So making sure you are on the platforms where it makes sense for your business and where your market is consuming that content. Um, but in other realms, if your business is, is, is shut down and you can't sell anything today, maybe now is a good time to look at those projects that were backburnered because you didn't have time to think about them when business was running. So we've got a, a handful of clients now that kind of were backburnering, like I need to revamp my website. And now they're saying, okay, I'm going to slow down my marketing funds on my paid channels on Instagram and Facebook because I can't really do anything with the people that I'm bringing to me now anyway. So I'm going to shift that and I'm going to put that toward revamping my website or redoing X, Y, and Z. So it kind of, it kind of depends. And, um, you know, like Susan said, any of us would be happy to work with you, help you figure out like where, what bucket do you land in and, and what's the best path for you right now. Yeah, absolutely. That's so great. And and to echo to what you both have mentioned, I mean, Local First is very fortunate to have a number of great marketing members. So we certainly have all of those friends listed in our directory too. So, um, you know, we have these four uh, wonderful friends who are joining us today and four more who are joining us on May 14th, but there are a whole host of friends who would love to work with you and support your business. Um, so definitely check out our directory listings as well. Um, so once someone has their plan in place, um, I think you already kind of hinted towards some of this already, but social media seems to be a really important player. Um, what role can that play, especially in this ever-changing season? I would say that it plays a huge role, um, especially for businesses that are used to face-to-face -face and different things like that. Social media has now become the face-to-face, -face, you mm -hmm. know, because we have to social distance. <laughs> um, but it's now has become this face-to-face -face and it's, really important right now, you know, to really, really focus on your social media, you know, posting onto your stories, um, doing fun campaigns. One, um, one particular client that I have, she has a tra travel agency. Um, there's no traveling that's going on right now, you know? So she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, we have a trip that was, that we were had to postpone, you know, that later ended up getting canceled. So like, how can we actually do this? So we've come up with like various different campaigns that were like simple, easy, and cost-free, you know, where we actually just picked out like, pick your favorite like travel dream guy that you would want to go with. And it was like celebrities and like people were like loving it, you know, and she didn't have to really do anything particular, even though it's like, focused on traveling, but it's also something that's like fun and cool. Um, really important to be specific with the hashtags that you use too on social media right now, because people are really searching hashtags right now. Like they're really looking at it and paying attention. So it's really important that you're specific with that, specific with the content that you're putting out there, because right now people are really on social media more than ever, you know, also it's just, really important than what you actually post. Mm -hmm. And engaging in, um, they've, we've seen a huge increase in Facebook Live um, engagement in all direct messaging platforms within each of the social platforms. So like Facebook messaging, Instagram direct messaging, all of that has seen an increase in engagement. So thinking about ways that you can engage even by messaging your audience directly to say, hey, we just wanted to let you know our store is planned to open up on this date or, you know, keeping in contact with them through those messaging platforms, through the Facebook Live, real content, you know, like behind the scenes, this is what we're dealing with, personal, people love that. They eat that up and they love that more so than even like just showing a picture of a product or, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, being real with your content, it's better to have something that is not highly produced than worrying about how it looks, especially in a story, Instagram story, where it's only up there for 24 hours. People aren't going to find it again unless you want them 
do. Um, and then the other thing that I just want to touch on is the fact that you have to be careful in your messaging if you are going to be running any sort of ad campaigns, um, not to use terms like COVID-19, coronavirus, mm -hmm. because all of that will get flagged and as could be flagged as sensational or misinformation. So it might seem like the right thing to do because that's what people want right now. Um, but we have to be careful with that. So changing your messaging in a way. So for example, um, we were putting out a blog article about like when to determine whether you need to redo your website or not. Changing that headline from something like that to is now the right time to be focusing on your website. Just a simple shift in messaging like that can make something seem more relevant. So even looking back, if you had a marketing plan, if you had a, a social calendar already in place and you're thinking, man, I already did all this work for all these posts and all the messaging I don't want to redo everything. You don't have to, probably. It's just looking at them and saying, how can I shift my messaging just a little bit to make it land where somebody sees that headline and says, oh, yeah, I was thinking about that too. And, you know, clicks through and engages with you. I always say, too, like with messaging, um, if your client or the person that sees it, if they take a second, they go, okay, does that, does that relate to me? Then that's how you know your messaging is clicking and it's good. Mm -hmm. or even sometimes even try the messaging out on yourself, you mm -hmm. know, to see like if it makes sense and if you can actually think about it for a second. Yeah. Would know. I care? Would I care yeah, if I saw this or would I be like, no, nope, scroll, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we won't be in this particular moment that we're in forever. Things will change, especially as we get into the revitalization phases. Um, how can businesses best position their branding now, but also beyond COVID-19? Yeah. Well, I can kind of speak to that for a little bit. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's, it comes down to the, I don't want to say basics, but for lack of a better word, um, it comes back down to the basics, you know, knowing your target audience and, you know, building those personas, um, you know, that's kind of a buzzword now in, in marketing, but knowing who your target audience is. So beyond, you know, where they live and how much money they make and all that, what's really driving them, which has changed, you know, over this time. So your, um, you know, to speak to the points you said before, um, what Fallon was saying is, you know, what your marketing plan was, four months ago isn't what it is going to be now, you know, because your target audience, everyone has shifted kind of how they they're thinking. So you need to shift with them and, you know, what is really driving them at this moment. So knowing what's driving them and, and where they're headed and really getting to know them. And some of that is like doing some surveys. Um, you can kind of survey some of your clients at that point. Um, but knowing that target audience, um, knowing what your niche is, um, you know, what are they doing? And then speaking to them where they are and in, and in, you know, in the medium where they are, you know, where are they getting their information? Because that's changed now too. You know, everyone is online, like we keep on saying. And so social media is really important, but by knowing who your target audience is and where they live, um, then you can say, are they on Facebook? You know, what is their age group? Where are they finding their, their information? Okay. So are they on Facebook is potentially right now? I mean, I, I don't recommend um, online uh, television advertising very often. I mean, it's, it's kind of a specific thing when I do recommend that for people. It does work, but it just depends on who you are. Right now, everyone's watching TV, <laughs> you know? And so that's a little different than it may be going forward, um, you know, their Instagram's good for some and it's not good for others. It's kind of knowing the places where to go and um, considering an inbound marketing campaign right now is something that I, that a lot of businesses, you know, especially the restaurants and, and um, bars and you know, some of the service industries we we're talking about today, but understanding your audience and then tracking them as they're go because everyone's going to be staying online. We, we moved everyone, shifted over and we're spending more time like this mm -hmm. that shift isn't going to go back and so you know some things are going to get back to normal but we really are truly going to have this new normal so um looking at inbound marketing campaigns what makes sense you know what your capacity is what does your website look like and 
getting more online if you, um, as we're trying to move that direction, because we're used to this now. I mean, there were, I've been, I was on a call um, two days ago about Amazon and ordering and how are people going to be getting their goods now? Because a lot of people are used to kind of like getting my groceries brought to my front door. You know, I don't really want to go out and get, you know, who knew I could get my soap this way, <laughs> you know? So, you know, just being aware of that. I don't want to take up all the time for that, but. No, I, I agree with what Christine is saying. And I think some of, some of the time we have to take as business owners just that complete step back and, and look at a holistic picture of who we are and what we're doing. And all of these things can maybe even sound overwhelming to you guys who are listening, but like, don't panic. Um, mm -hmm. We all, I think that first week had a bit of panic and we're all now, we, good days and bad days if we're honest as business owners. And um, depending on your industry, you're, you're either surviving barely or you're so busy that you uh, have a lot of other issues right not financial but don't panic these are hard times but but plan for that future know that there is this future you've built a business i don't know if you're sole proprietors or you're working for somebody but there is a business that surrounded you so before this covid which i hate that word but before this there was success and that doesn't mean that this one thing is going to shut you down Stay transparent. Keep your dialogue open. We've all touched upon that. And cultivate the team within before your market without. Um, it's extremely important that your team is on the same page that you are as a business owner. They're struggling. They're struggling with different things. So keep that culture tight. Keep, keep that communication open. This market will change. We can all be here to tell you this week, next week, six months from now, what you ought to be doing in your business with the strategies, where you should be putting your marketing dollars. But the first and foremost is build that brand culture from the inside out. Make sure everybody knows that you're a good leader. You are there. You're there for them on all sorts of levels. I've had to do that with my team. They're all vastly different. So we have all these marketing things that we can offer you. But I say you start there as a business owner because this is a pain no one has ever felt before, or at least... In most of us on this call mm -hmm. stay true to that brand culture once you you have built this culture stay true to what that culture is because you build this from the inside out and that's how you're successful as a business owner your team trusts you collaborate with them build leaders within your organization and those people will help build your brand in your business um, you've probably already built a trusted brand and had loyal followers what Christine is saying, how do you engage them? How do you keep them? How do they know? Like we all said, we all need to know that you're still there. You've built that trusted brand. Communicate wherever you can with them, even if it's a Zoom call, through your social media, on your website, you know, phone calls, whatever it can be just to, to keep that going. Personal connections are more important now than ever. We are all feeling different as humans. And we're not hugging and we're, we're stuck with our core people in our house and we're not supposed to socialize outside of that. But as businesses, that's a big challenge, obviously. But we're here to help you navigate what that is and where to put your, your marketing dollars, where to back off. I've done the same thing for all of our clients. We've cut back on Instagram because they're stronger on Facebook right now. We are going to revamp a website, but we've put it on hold. There's a lot of things, and I know each one of us as panelists are working for free at a given point. Um, and we do that because we care about our clients and our relationships with them. But we know that we have to keep our businesses going too. And we have to have strategies put in place and we have to change and pivot. And I just encourage you as business owners, no matter if you've been in business for a year to 25 to 35, however long it is, you've been in business and this won't shut you down. If you stay nimble, you're willing to change, Reach out to the people you think you need help from. It's, we're a phone call away, and this is not a sales pitch from any one of us. This is just a connection. Um, I'm extremely passionate about small business. I am a small business. So keeping those going and how do we do that is really important, I think, in this day and age. But being authentic and communicating who you are, what you do through your, your messaging, your imagery, does need to pivot at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
just to reiterate what you're saying with your internal communications, um, it, it does sound like it's going to come down the pipeline and I don't know at what size business is going to be mandatory, but there are going to be some reporting functions that you have to, there's going to be all kinds of communications to your internal people <laughs> that we're going to be mandated to do. So staying on the personal level with it's really going to help that because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming for all that, but, yeah. but um, yeah, but we are all here. So if you're starting to worry about your marketing part of it, just connect with one of us. Like we're saying, we're all volunteering time to do this. So just connect with one of us and, and take maybe that piece off of your list of things to worry about, you know, just reach out. Yeah, I was just going to echo um, what both of you guys said really quick though. Um, because a lot of times as business, business owners, we sometimes shy away from reaching out for help. And now is the time to really reach out, especially because help is out there and people are more than ever willing to help. You know, you never know if you don't actually reach out and ask. So mm -hmm. 100%. Absolutely. Um, speaking of asking, we'll soon move into our question and answer session. So if there's something that you are still wanting to know more about from our four panelists today, um, be thinking of that and use our Q&A uh, question here. Um, before we dive into that, we'll just do a quick round. I'm curious to know from um, each of you what those kind of top three things to consider in this season are. Um, and once we go through that, we can jump into any remaining questions that folks might have. I'll jump in. Um, the top three things that we have learned um, and that our, I think our clients have learned through this is partnerships, which is all what everybody's echoing about, like reaching out for help, partnering with other people. We're stronger when we're working together. Um, and so that can be reaching out to other businesses and forming partnerships and saying like, hey, you and I can be, you know, a restaurant and a retail. Let's develop a sweet Mother's Day package together that we put out there and offer to the community. Um, and then we get in front of both of our audiences. So partnering in that way. And then, um, you know, echoing what Susan's saying about partnering in your within your team, too. I think as business owners and leaders and businesses, we tend to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders that we have to do everything to um, protect our team and protect and like keep everybody's livelihood going. And there's no reason not to cultivate and raise up leaders in your organization and ask for them, give them a task, give them a project, give them uh, something that you're dealing with to run with and say, what, what are your ideas for this thing? You know, even if it's pockets of teams throughout your organization. So partnering externally, partnering internally, not trying to take that weight of the world on yourself. Um, and then, you know, e-commerce and a social presence are probably the other two top things um, that I would say are important right now. I think um, just from a very small group of people as in my network of friends, um, the, the desire to shop small, the desire to shop local is big right now. Um, you seem to get better service, you get things faster. Ordering on Amazon, I ordered a thing for my son, a, a action figure um, last week, Wednesday, and it came yesterday. It took a week from Amazon. <laughs> what? You know, like <laughs> nobody wants that right now. Yeah. And so I would much rather work with a local toy shop and go do curbside pickup and feel good about helping a local organization and its better service all around a great thing and experience. So in speaking to this audience here specifically of local organizations, I think that there's a desire to interact with you and do business with you from a general uh, population standpoint. So making that available and um, making it as easy as possible for folks, I think you'll see you know, a little bit of a boost at least in, in what you're doing. Yeah, I can go next. This Fallon's done. Um, I think the, some really key things um, to consider right now is your communication strategy. And that has to change because who we are as businesses doesn't, but how we're doing business does. 
Uh, you can look at the restaurant industry. That's been a, a huge shift. My daughter works in one, and that's just been, you know, painful to watch because some are closing, but the ones that aren't closing are pivoting, changing, and meeting the needs of their 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 clients. You know, their their end users, their target markets. So how you're communicating from the messaging content to the imagery is really important. And that does change, like I said, because the human connection don't show a place where a lot of people are hugging and we're all together because that's not the reality of what life is right now. Yes, we'll get there again. But so what is the imagery? What's the communication strategy for your business? Mm -hmm. um, another would be, and I've seen this across the board in all industries, is your partnership, like Fallon said, with local, shopping local, what all the companies and all the TV commercials and our saying is they're giving back, giving back to community, giving back to first responders. Denoria, I think it's Denoria Chevrolet. They're not my client. I'm not plugging them, but um, their commercial basically talks about first responders and they have a special price for them. So how you connect with community and how you give back to community is hugely important right now. Um, as a company, we do that, but I'm not here to tell ourselves. But so there's nonprofits. How are you helping a nonprofit, supporting a nonprofit? I've seen it on LinkedIn and strategies, sharing Mel Trotter posts, sharing different things, giving back. That's a huge part of how your communication strategy, part of it should be sincerely and authentically and transparently, but not patting your own back as a company. Um, so that big giving back is huge right now. And that's been a big market shift. And I think that will continue to be for a while. As humans, we've been disconnected and we're trying desperately to connect ourselves back together. And we're doing it through our businesses and through nonprofits and supporting nonprofits. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I can it kind of bounce off of what both Susan and Fallon said, um, you know, so as the top three, one of those things like you both are saying is there's a, there's a huge shift and it kind of happened after 9-11 too, where we kind of um, are all like, we're all for one right now. And so there's that feeling of community out there. And so we're local first. And so this is like the time for local businesses because, you know, we're all, um, really appreciating each other, appreciating where we live, appreciating everything that was out there that we took advantage of and didn't really, you know, took for granted when we didn't realize, you know, that we could get out there and do it. Um, you know, I've been trying to go to a local restaurant, um, you know, a couple of times a week and get to go and the lines are very long and people are being really friendly and it's like, hey, we're in this together. And so there is that feeling. And so there's a strength in numbers. So I really believe that there's something we can all do together to kind of lift us all as we're coming out of this. And so I've got some thoughts about that that take way longer than the time we have left. But but to echo your thoughts and, and to really, um, you know, talk about that local and community and promoting each other. We are in this together. So when we come out of this, it's not, you know, this restaurant against that restaurant and who's going to bring everybody back in. It's like, this is grand rapids this is the yeah. greater grand rapids area this is us let's do this thing you know i'm at um you know i'm i'll just say for telly's because it's coming because i have a pizza craving right now for some reason but you know so local restaurants so this is for telly's and they're you know across the street they could be promoting you know go over there and get this and get that there's a lot of kind of cool things we can be doing together you know how do you do that within your community where they come to your place and pick up one thing and they go to the next place and pick up something else and so I think there's some cool things we can do that and really unite. So I think there's a lot of opportunity coming out of this to do that. Um, relationships are key, internal, external. We've all been talking about that. You know, what are your relationships and what do they mean to you and, and your relationship with your neighbor and, you know, your competing business and the retailer. And like we were all talking about with that um, information and being online. And we've all kind of done that. And then center. You know, we do forget, we forget we're the business owner and we have this on our shoulders, you know, and, and, and I'm going to admit this right on here and there's a bunch of people I can't even see your faces, but I'll just do this. And I've been doing this for 20 years. 
been through a lot. We're doing okay. We're helping a lot of people um, message right now. And, you know, we've got a lot going on. We're doing okay, but it's still a lot of pressure. And I had, I was, uh, you know, talking with my graphic designer, one of my lead team members, and he said to me, I don't know how you do it. You've got all this energy and you're just taking this on and you've taken on so much because you're helping all these other people too. And I just don't, I don't know how you do it. And you get this stuff done and you just got it. And I started crying. <laughs> Because it's like, oh, I'm under a lot of stress. It like took that moment for, for it to hit me that, you know, we have that tendency to like take it on for other people. So don't forget, you know, to meditate, take that walk, you know, step back. It's okay to not have the answer. You know, it's all right to not have the answer. Join some of these groups. I'm in a CEO group and you get in there and it's like, oh, okay, I'm not the only one going through this. So, so that piece, if you start working about marketing, call us, yeah. you know, we're, we're here for you, well, you know, but the rest of it, take, you know, get in there <laughs> and take care of you. I would say, um, right now really is a really good time to brain. I like to call it brain bounce, um, brain bounce with people that are in the same industry as you, you know, so you guys can actually like think of ways to kind of work together because a lot of times we like to think that we're alone, you know, but there's a lot of people that feels the exact same way and no one feels the exact same way as you do is someone that's in your same industry. So, and I kind of feel like it's, it's kind of like a preparation. Like this pandemic is kind of like the preparation for a marathon. Like you're doing like now is your time to like prepare to get ready because once that race is on, you don't get this time back, you know? So like really, really do a lot of brain bouncing and getting together with that. Another thing is I would um, actually kind of echo what Christine said, um, take a moment to reflect as business owners, we're constantly on the go. We're constantly thinking, we're constantly doing. We rarely sit back and say, okay, I'm going to focus on my mental. You know, like this is also a really good time to kind of, you know, focus on your mental health, you know, because that kind of aligns with your purpose or your why to know why you're actually doing it. And if you haven't had the opportunity to really, you know, focus and zone in why you're actually a business owner in the first place, once everything is back and open, you'll get drowned in a heartbeat and you don't want that to happen. Um, another thing is really um, recognize, are you really using the right platform? To market your business you know a lot of people they think okay there's facebook so we're going to use facebook well facebook may not be the business you know that or the social media presence that you may need to use it may be pinterest or so now is a good time to really know what is the actual right platform to actually market your business awesome thank you so much for those tips and for your expertise in this panel um, I know we're running got about 10 minutes left. So Catherine, would you mind just uh, running us through what the questions are that popped up? Yeah, sure. Thank you all so much. This is really interesting. Some really great information here. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some really great questions. Um, so let's start first. Tara started off with a really relevant question. This is great. So they have thankfully been busy uh, receiving lots of additional first time customers. So she's looking for ideas for how to retain those customers after the crisis, not to forget about them when they transition to whatever the new normal is. So, um, like I can address a little of that, but I'm sure everybody could. Um, I think it's, it goes back to the relationship and your customer service, uh, who you are, what you do and why you do it. If, if that's clear to your customer and you build a loyal follower or a loyal client, I think that's where you sit right now. And, you know, where you, if you do surveys, however you're interacting with this particular kind, I don't know what industry you're in, so it's a little hard for me to mm -hmm. um, fully answer the question, but um, I think if you're conscious about your relationship and the customer experience, they picked you for a reason right now, and maybe you find out what that reason is. And if that's the most important reason to them, you make sure that's built into your brand culture and that your team goes back to like all of us had said, building that, that leadership team around you and, and keeping and retaining those. Have a retention plan. What does that retention plan look like? Have a retention strategy for your clients. Communicate with all your clients to find out why they picked you and, and whatever your industry, your service is. Oh, someone else can probably answer more. I would say to, um, 
and it is a little hard for me to, because I don't really know what the industry is, but the easiest way that I feel like goes across the board is everybody loves free things or everybody loves like a loyalty program or like after so many visits, you know, you get a free item or if you refer a friend, you know, that's a discount there. So I would really say um, a good easy way to, you know, have your customer, a return customer, definitely build a loyalty program you know, where they can look, they have something to look forward to the next time they come in. Because a lot of times people are always like, okay, well, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of this if I go to you or if I continue to go to you? How am I going to benefit from it? So I would really look into that. Yeah. And I would, you know, on, uh, on top of that, you know, building in the thank you programs, people really like getting personalized notes. It doesn't happen very often now, and especially with this whole, the way we're all feeling with each other, and a nice personal note for that. And then, um, you know, depending on what your, you know, it says restaurant food truck business. So oh, okay. Kind of, yeah, they just, they just, they just, they just, they just type it in. yeah, so yeah, good, you know, uh, good food. So let us know. We'll come and, you know, come, and come to you too. Um, but uh, building that in and if you're online, you know, there's, there are a few kind of simple ways that you can do an automated system to where you can get people into a drip email drip campaign. That's kind of, you know, communication and you're constantly communicating with them. You're busy. You're trying to do this restaurant and food truck. So if, if I were to say to you, email them, you know, every month, that might not happen, but you can get this into an automated um, drip campaign. I'm Italian. Sorry. I talk with my hands all the time. Um, <laughs> you can get, so drip campaign looks like this. Um, so getting them into something like that it is helpful too. So starting out personal, but then you know, having that drip campaign come mm -hmm. on there and then you can put specials like um, Asia was saying and different things as a part of that. And thank them, thank them, thank them. Also I think too, here too uh, oh, just quickly, Alana from Schuler Books also mentioned they're doing handwritten notes in their orders, which is a really mm -hmm. nice touch. It really is, I love that. Yeah, my oh, daughter works at the restaurant. Oh, go ahead. And she's doing the same thing. They have the handwritten notes, they're thanking them and people are actually posting those notes on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They are so excited to get a thank you from somebody that they're, they're posting those notes. So knowing the food industry, put those thank you notes in those bags. Make sure they know that how the food is being prepped is safety, 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 they're, that they're important as clients to you and you want to retain them and everything that everybody said is a good idea. I was just going to say too, like, um, especially on your social media platform, like if they're there and they put an order in, um, and if they are okay with it, take a picture of it and post it online. People love to be like shown or, you know, ask for their Instagram name to tag them or different things like that. That way, you know, you would be known for kind of sharing like your customer reviews that actually go there because people that may see it that's an easy word of mouth way of actually marketing your business too that's great well thank you all. i think that's super helpful hopefully tara that gives you some ideas um moving on to another question here from caitlin um any tricks for managing facebook pages and google businesses for one organization that has multiple places or facilities yeah if I can I don't go ahead, here. Christine. I was going to say we don't. We have uh, an expert in that on our team that I could definitely get an answer to that. I don't have it today, but um, I know that there's a way. Yeah, there's. Yeah, you have to claim the pages, and we could definitely help you if you wanted to call. So you says uh, you're mul you're managing Facebook pages and Google businesses. So for the Facebook pages. Um, get Google, get the Facebook business manager is what you can do and so then you can manage all of those and it's really nice too because there's an app you use on your phone that's super helpful and you can connect all of those under one organization so managing multiple pages we do that because we have them for clients um, and I'm sure Asia does the same thing she has a social media company but part of what we do is manage their Facebook pages and so as you can imagine you get a lot coming in that way it's all in one place so that that piece is um, amazing Google businesses for one organization you can do that as well you can claim them and you can claim them under one organization so there is a way to do that and I could send some tips to you um, I can even answer it send you a link to do that I want to read the rest of it Mer you can merge duplicate pages and you can merge your Facebook pages too um, there's, there's a couple of ways to do it, depending on whether you own both pages or not. Um, we've had quite a few clients who um, have kind of lost track. This happened during this time a lot where they 
weren't really doing their Facebook page and then they're like, I got to get online right now and then realize they didn't have the login. They couldn't remember which email was used to do it. It's sitting out there with all this stuff on it and they can't get to it. So there is a way to claim that page on Facebook. Um, you have to send them a copy of your, um, like a consumer's energy bill or, you know, an energy bill, but you can claim that page. And then once you do, you can, you can um, merge them together depending on how they're set up. So there are ways to do that. So it, it can be done. <laughs> Definitely. I'm sure that's reassuring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you need help, just reach out to one of us. To help that's you great. with that. Thank you all for that. Hopefully that helps Caitlin. Um, Tex, we have a question from Tex Bryant here. Um, are any of your clients who will be physically interacting with clients or who are now assessing what it will take to ensure trust in the interactions. For instance, tar Target will only let you shop if you have a mask on. So we're setting those expectations and how do you ensure that trust? Yeah, um, I'll just quickly, I have clients from a lot of different industries and it depends on the industry you're in and, and how people will feel safe coming back to shop. One of my clients is a small consignment shop. So that's a little bit tricky. And we're talking about what does this walkout plan look like? What are the things she needs to put into place? And when do those things go into place? And how do you communicate that on Facebook? But she's been trusted and been in business for 35 years. So people already trust her. So that's a big factor. But when you're talking a large company like Target, that's a whole nother strategy. That's a whole nother level. Um, so yes, and yes, and yes, but different for different industries and for different reasons. So I don't know what industry you're in. I would suggest reaching out maybe if you have the ability, if you have a um, like an email list of your client base, maybe doing a survey of how are you feeling about, how would you feel about coming back into our organization? What are the things that are worrisome to you? Um, so that you're getting a good pulse on what you need to be worried about. You may be, you may be overthinking it. You may be underthinking it. You may be right in line with what you need to be thinking of. Um, so if it's, if it's an industry um, where there is a lot of face-to-face -face interaction, I don't know what industry you're in, but you know, if it's a service industry where you're cutting somebody's hair or a spa service or something like that, are people going to want to come in if all of your staff are wearing masks? Is that enough? Or is it a service industry where perhaps you're, it's meetings and the meetings just are virtual and everybody's okay with that and we don't need to worry about what that looks like? So. Um, I think surveying and, and getting a pulse of how people are feeling. I also think that there's a caveat to that because how people may be feeling today might not be how people are feeling in three weeks if all of a sudden things start opening up and everybody starts getting sick. So, well, and that's a great idea. I just want to interject really. If you do that, you have the survey, you find out where they are. Now you educate them, have an educational mm -hmm. piece along with the survey, then that will build the trust. I think it's a great idea Fallon had to do that and then build the trust. So have the education piece come after the survey. Here's what you should not be worried about. Like there, like Fallon said, it's changing so regularly. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Wear gloves, don't wear a glove. I mean, everything, is, it's, it consumes our thoughts. But if we could have the survey, get the pulse, and then follow up with the education, I think that would be key. Very helpful. Um, we have a question here from a different type of industry. Uh, we are a local community theater who's being hit hard, like many nonprofit arts organizations. We've had great responses from our current patrons, but as the time passes, I'm worried that we'll start to run dry. How does an art nonprofit navigate reaching new folks when people are feeling so strapped these days? It looks like there's another question in the chat that's about nonprofits in general. So maybe if we can bring those two together. Yeah, it's fundraising idea. during this time when everyone is struggling is the other part. I wonder about virtual events for those types of organizations. Can you put something on where people would buy a ticket to view, you know, a live audience? Like, and I don't, I don't know what that looks like, but, um, you know, something like a virtual event. I know we talked about that a little bit, too, and then... Um, Along with that, I've also heard this doesn't really apply to the theater per, per se, but if you are going to be doing a virtual event, sending like a care package that goes before the event, like I've heard about like sending um, like champagne glasses and a bottle of champagne before uh, a fundraising alumni event, that's not going to be able to be happen, but it's going to happen virtually. So then you're getting a fun package at home and then you maybe might dress up and do like a 
you know, fun Zoom night or whatever. So I think I think trying to incorporate some sort of thing, an experience, whether that's virtual um, through Zoom or through Facebook Live, where people pay or donate um, to be part of it. Yeah, I, um, that made me think of um, like if like a Facebook group, like a private group is created and then you can host like a Facebook watch party on top of like the package that's sent to them, that would probably engage them because then people are like, oh, I want to be included in this, you know, because no one wants to feel left out if it's something that they enjoy. So that would probably, you know, get their attention to be a part of it. Yeah, we work, yeah, we work with a lot I'm, of nonprofits and it's a, it's a tough time right now because so many people are um, struggling and so many people are trying to reach out. Everything's getting canceled. Um, we've had you know, a really big program um, that was supposed to be last weekend. <laughs> we spent a whole month just messaging the canceling part of that, just like a lot of people have. Um, but the big thing with that is telling the stories. And so it's, it's all about the messaging with it too. So I don't think it's a time to not ask because obviously nonprofits need, need the money, but it's kind of the how and the messaging, like everyone was sharing on how, you know, the events and how to do that and telling the stories of the people who are affected. So with the theater, you know, how, how does, how does that fit in the community? How is that, how do the people who are coming to the theater react? What is it that they're missing? What was great about last year? You know, telling those stories in kind of an uplifting way and telling, you know, in visually and words and telling those stories so that people feel the connection. Mm -hmm. people, are, people are still giving. Um, and, and now what I'm, for a lot of them, they're giving now more than ever, even though we have less, there's more coming in. Um, but things are, are being cut. I don't want to say, oh, well, you're going to get the same amount that you got last year, but people are still giving. And it's that connection that we're all just wanting to be a part of. So telling like explaining like what you're doing with the funds too. So, you know, with this, with, with the donations that we're getting, here's how we're using them. Here's the plan for them. Um, that's a good messaging tactic too. Mm -hmm. Susan, you no. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Asia. No, I was just going to say, I know that there are a ton. I believe that there is the, the Kent County um, Fund Relief. Um, I think today is the last day to actually apply if you are a business owner and you're needing funding. And I believe, too, Stark Garden is still having their five by five, um, which is a great opportunity to pitch your business um, for five minutes for an opportunity to win $5,000. Sorry, that just came to my mind. Yeah, it's great. There are certainly um, lots of businesses who are, who are doing some really great stuff, continuing their programming and creating some new things. So it's great to mention those. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here, especially to our panelists for sharing your expertise and everyone who attended for the great questions and just for coming to learn some more information. Um, again, we're so inspired by everybody's ability to help support and just collaborate in this time. Um, I want to honor everybody's time. I know we're past two now, so I will um, just follow up with some